All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is um, the RSI. Now, moving average is what's called a trending indicator. Actually, before we move on to the RSI, let me just explain that when the market is range bound and choppy, moving averages aren't going to help you much because they're going to be tightly wound together. Even the, even the short or longs are going to be tight, tightly wound together. They're going to be crossing very frequently. They're not. They're going to give you false signals loads of the time. And let's put on something a bit thicker, like the DAX. Um, I just prefer the DAX to the FTSE as personal preference. But you know, the amount of times you end up crossing the 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 uh, the, the larger time frame moving average or the longer period moving average, you've got to be careful. The disadvantages of it is that if you're using it during choppy markets, you're going to get chopped up. However, the advantage is if you can identify a trending market and then get on the end of it let's let's zoom out a little bit then the moving average is going to help you time that trade because it's far cleaner the signals that you get as opposed to a choppy or range bound market so that's a one word of caution uh, with the moving average so let's take those off now and let's put on uh, the RSI so we insert indicator and as I say the link to this free chart packages at the end very handy little charts uh, so these are called what's known as oscillators. We've gone past it. Uh, RSI, Relative Strength Index. So we put that on, and let's just close these off so we can get a better glimpse of what's going on with this. And let's make it a nicer color. I think that's probably not the best color for us. Shall we go with a nice white thick line? Yes, let's do that. So easy enough to put on, as you can see. Now RSI is basically there's a there's a complicated reasonably complicated formula with it but ultimately it's giving us what's called an overbought or oversold condition it's trying to tell us if the market is stretched so when the price goes above and everyone's got their own parameters for this again and let's put on a daily cuz I think we'll probably get a bit of a clearer picture here when the price goes above 60 65 it's considered considered overbought so if the market is oscillating back and forth it's going to um, go into an overbought situation and if we start to go down a lot very very quickly this is very simplified if we go down very very quickly um, quite a lot we're going to get an oversold condition where the mark where the RSI is going to go below 40 so anything below 40 or below below 30 is very oversold above 70 is very overbought and the theory goes is that when the market is overbought you're looking for it to roll back again so you're looking for short um, setups for it to roll back for the market to roll back down into a sort of neutral condition where it's about 50 so as we stand now on the DAX we're at about 43 so we're pretty neutral you know at the beginning of uh, of August when we'd spiked right back up and had that good run we were very overbought and we unwound that condition by doing a bit of consolidating and now we're coming down a little bit and we've sort of gone into a little bit of neutral territory if we run down very very quickly we're going to go into oversold so that's the theory that goes with that you're looking to trade uh, against the move if we're overbought you're looking to sell it if we're oversold you're looking to buy it now uh, and also let's just before we move on to some of the strategies with that you change your uh, upper bands obviously 70 30 so you can choose where you're overbought or oversold is obviously the higher the band the less likely it is to get in there get the rsi into 80 is pretty extreme the lower the band uh obviously the more the more signals you're going to get so if you bring that down from say 80 to 60 you're going to get more signals but they're going to be a little bit less reliable and the settings wise again it's the length so it's the average so here it's got a 14 period that tends to be the, the average uh, the, the default setting for most platforms but for some uh, you guys prefer to have it a little bit shorter like on a 10 period uh, and some guys prefer to have it long obviously shorter you're going to get more exaggerated moves whoops obviously longer period you're going to smooth out just like it was with the moving average so we're going to a like a 50 period here let's go with the 40 or the day clicking it uh, you can see it's much more smooth the action if you go back to one day you can see how it's it's more smooth and narrowed down because it's taking more of an average obviously if we do keep going and going and going for a hundred day period you're going to get a much more of a sole condition or over bought condition so that's how you use the moving average let's go back to the default setting of 14 so that's how you use the RSI. Um, now, 
there are various strategies to use with this and I would recommend going onto Google and looking at all the different ways of using this. But I just want to tell you the disadvantages and advantages with it. A market can stay overbought or oversold for a long, long time. So if you're thinking of selling every time we get oversold or buying, sorry, buying every time we get oversold or selling every time we get overbought, you may well be in for a bit of a shock. Here's an example here. Oversold condition, the lowest, the lowest reading we've had for a while. DAX moved down. You had a couple of days of up move before it went even lower. Okay, so just 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 doing that on its own is a losing strategy because the market can go into a trend environment. And this is what I say about using the right indicators for the right job. If the market's trending, an oscillator indicator like an RSI or like a stochastic is going to be useless because you're just going to sit overbought for so long as the market just keeps going and going and going because it's gone into a trend mode. It's repricing its natural environment. Whereas if you've got a nice range bound market, then that's when the oscillator comes into its own. Now, another strategy that some people use is they use what's called a, a divergence. So if the price goes to a new low, but the oscillator doesn't, so the RSI here, fresh low, didn't go to a new low. So you've got a little bit of a, a positive divergence because the price has gone to a new low, but the oscillator hasn't. Some people take that as a sign that that is a bottom and they will buy from that. Um, it's not something I look at too much, but it's a tool nevertheless, and it's a popular tool. And one thing that I, I would say you can use it for is to say, listen, I'm trading my five minute chart. I'm not going to chase the market if it's overbought. So if it's overbought, I'm not gonna buy. So if you're not using it as a, as a, as a trading, alert you can use it as a filter and say listen we're very overbought at the moment anything above 60 i'm not going to buy and what that will do is it'll stop you chasing if you have a tendency to chase the market and try and get involved and get panicked into the market at highs and lows that will stop you doing that so it acts as a good filter and say listen i'm only going to get involved when we're on the long side when we're below 60 and on the short side when we're you know above 40. for an example that just might be a way you use it as a filter remember you don't always have to use it as a complete trigger you can use it as a filter